So today I want to talk about and show you my thoughts about the hurdle drill. I have one basic marking drill, which is a wide drill, but as far as land drills that you do on a continu continuous basis, I have the hurdle drill, the seven bumper lining drill, and the star drill, three drills. And each one of those accomplishes a lot. A lot of people say, oh yeah, I did, I do the hurdle drill. But the hurdle drill can be much more than meets the eye. I like to start with the A hurdle, like you see that beautiful blue hurdle out there. It's blue because it represents a piece of water. Um, <clears throat> the hurdle drill teaches lots of stuff. It starts with just if there's an obstacle and you don't go around it, you go over it. <clears throat> it does much more than that though. In, in, the, in further context, it's where I begin to put my hand down. When I use my hand, I put my hand down, it means there's something to watch out for. A piece of cover, a corner of water, a log, a hurdle, a boat. Something that is different. When that hand comes down, they say, whoops, I gotta look for something. So I begin to teach my hand coming down on the hurdle drill. Also, the hurdle drill teaches the idea that you don't go th over a hurdle just because the hurdle's in the field, only when the mark is over the hurdle. So I try to incorporate going past the hurdle or the obstacle and over, over past. Furthermore, I try to expand and continually expand. So I'll take the hurdle drill. Hey, you, stay in the classroom here with me. Here, sit. It's just a caterpillar. Um, sit. I like to incorporate it with marks, blinds, the hurdle, all sorts of things. So I'm gonna start with just the basic hurdle drill. I'm not gonna go through all the steps of how you get a dog to jump a hurdle. I've already done that in my fundamentals videos. It's there if you, if you need it. And plus, I've expanded even further there where I'm using a hurdle and pieces of water and all sorts of comp complications. So Shadow has been over a hurdle before. So this isn't the first time he's done that, but I wanna describe how you can use the hurdle to keep expanding the whole concept of going where I want you to go, take the obstacle, don't take the obstacle, go, go where I'm telling you to go is part of the issue. Okay, come on, buddy. So the first thing we're gonna do is just, just jump the hurdle, both coming and going. Sit, sit. Back. Here, perfect example. If they miss the hurdle, here. Here, you move up and make sure they don't miss it again. Sit, back. Good, okay. So I'm glad that happened. When they miss the obstacle, you don't keep doing it until they get it right. That's attrition, that takes forever. And where's the dog out? Here. So, here, sit. Sit. Back. Good. So, heel, sit, out. Try one more. Sit, back. Now after you've got that going on, if you have a two-sided dog, I'll just do it for fun. Here, sit, 
Make sure you do it on both sides. Back. When you can do that, then the next step is to say, okay, well, they're not all over the hurdle here. Sit. Back. Sit. And then you might even expand it to do something like this. Sit. Here. Kennel. Here. Here. So every time you introduce a new element, you have a new issue. And the thing turns into a beautiful drill because here. Kennel. 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 Sit. Good. Sit. Back. You're not going to get perfection the first time because these are puppies. This is a seven month old puppy. He's learning how to do these things. So you go to the, to a, something that's not over the hurdle. You go over the hurdle. You go to a crate. So once you can do those things, sit. You could even heal. Sit, practice casting. Sit. This is a little risky, but ready, sit. Black. Turn the wrong way. It's okay. Okay, now, here, sit. Now I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to add another element to this, and then we'll continue. We've added another element there, which is a, a canoe. Now you, you have to be careful where you throw it, because uh, sit. Back. Very good. So now you have the element of two, two hurdles. No big deal, and I know everybody thinks they do this, but when you get it um, really done, you can and should put piles on these locations so you, can, you don't have to be throwing and hoping your throw's good. So now I'm gonna stop for a second. I'm gonna put some little piles out and show sort of an expanded version. And now I'm gonna start introducing, also putting my hand out. So, okay, so now I've got a little pile by the stick. I've got a little pile behind the canoes. I've got my crate out there so I can do back to home plate. And uh, so I'll experiment a little bit. Now, I don't expect perfection here. It doesn't happen where everything's perfect. So, well, we're just working on this. It's something we're working on because I want to establish the language between him and me so I can tell him where I want him to go and I want us to agree on it and to him actually go there, not to agree on it and then go somewhere else. So that's why you do this, a lot of repetitions of this so you can count on it you know it's going to happen. You're not saying, geez, I wonder if he's going to. No, no wondering he's going to because we've worked on it and I count on him to do what I want. So here we go. Sit. Back. Okay, so we've got the double hurdle going. Now I'm gonna go for the, for the stick, heel, sit. Good, sit, 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 back. Good. 
Good. Okay, so that's a stick. Now I'm going to put another wrinkle in this. And I'm going to go for my little blind I've got out there. All right, come up. Sit. Come on. Dead bird. Here, dead bird. Right there, dead bird. Back. Okay. Good. That a boy. Okay. Okay. He sit. Out. Sit. Okay. I'm just gonna experiment with something here. Sit. Here. Kennel. Sit. Watch me. Over. Good. Excellent. Very good, very good, very good. Heel. Heel. Sit. Good. If you have a little creative thing going on in your head, you can do a lot with this. You can create a really nice training session all by yourself with a couple hurdles.